Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. The Savachi syndrome, I'm telling you, I'm like, well, holy shit, that was crazy. Wait for it. Thick and slick. <laughs> Yo, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Moto Aftermath Show, episode number... Fuck, what are we on? 201? It's 201, isn't it? Yeah. 201! I'm your host, Travis. We are here to wrap up the 2022 Supercross season here. And, uh... Yeah, just give out some thoughts here for the final round in Salt Lake City. Talk one championship that got decided. Talk some things that happened throughout the day. And uh, just kind of go over everything. It was a was a wild night. So uh, before we jump into that, just want to thank our sponsors. So first off, show presented by Energy Fuel, the best fucking drink out there. Keep yourself fueled, energized, and strong from start to finish. Pick yours up today at CoachRobStore.com. That's Coach Rob with two Bs, store.com. Next presenting sponsor, Premier Custom Trailers. If you need a trailer, commercial or residential, Premier Custom Trailers has what you need. They work with the best manufacturers in the industry and specialize in all your trailer needs. Sales, service, parts, or rentals, they do it all. PremierCustomTrailers.com, located five minutes south of US-131 uh, in Schoolcraft, Michigan. They put the custom in customer service. And also TLR Coatings, Michigan's number one custom powder coating shop. From two-tone wheels to motorcycle frames to small batch production jobs, TLR Coatings will powder coat anything metal the right way. Looking for some custom Sarah coating? They do that too. TLR Coating serving Southwest Michigan and surrounding areas for over five years. Check them out at TLRCoatings.com or on all the major social media networks at TLR Coatings. Loads of other sponsors on board with us too to help make everything happen around here. Alias Sport, Holster Co., Dirt Bike Depot, JT Cycle, Adept Creative Co., Gutter Works, Isaac Nelson Design, and Clutch Media all on board. Links in the description below. Uh, for all those, there's there's discount codes, all sorts of cool stuff. Um, if you want to uh, pick up some merch, um, uh, you know, help us out monetarily, buy something off Amazon that we'll get a small slice of. Uh, support us on Patreon. Um, there are links in the description for all of that, and we very, very much appreciate it. Also, biggest thing you can do if you don't want to spend any money is just like, subscribe, comment, share, help us out. <sighs> been a long season here folks and i'm glad to be wrapping this up and have a have a couple weeks off here um also we have the podcast on soundcloud apple spotify and google podcast on the phone with me today wrapping the show up it is the usual og co-host here it is the one the only justin hey buddy what's up man well you know we made it through another supercross season here yeah man fucking uh what is it uh I believe How this. Was, strong now? I believe this was season six. Holy crap! <laughs> we got to get through. We got to get through Desnations this year before I call it a whole. Before I call it a whole year six, but. Well, you know, and this year we'll be actually covering the Desnations because we'll be there. So. Yeah. So anyway, um, all right, Cole now on the line with us today. For those of you who don't know, it's it's Sunday, and here in the U.S. it is. Uh, a Hallmark holiday called Mother's Day. Um, we're actually recording the show slightly later than normal. It's going to be a little bit of a shorter show than normal. Uh, me and Justin going to kind of breeze through this race recap here. Um, I might try to call Kev later. Um, so we might have a Kevin Moran's interview too, but I'm not really sure. Um, yeah, and basically we're gonna gonna breeze through this here. So, um, a lot on the plate. Very busy uh, with the business uh, outside of the show here. The show, as everyone knows, is just... I just want to put this shit out here because, uh, Justin, I don't know if you saw that screenshot I sent you guys this morning of me and the dude going at it in the comments on the fantasy show. Uh, oh, no, we didn't uh, We didn't get that, but I saw the uh, I saw the comment. Yeah, I didn't he, even go through the, uh, the group text, but oh, I did see the comment. Okay, well, anyway, um, th this, this podcast is, always has been, and probably will be for years to come, just a side gig of ours. The Fantasy Podcast is a side gig of a side gig. And I'll go through this on the, when we do the Fantasy Wrap-Up for the end of the year here or two in the next day or two. This is not my main job. I make zero 
fucking dollars doing this, okay? I handle things in order of importance, okay? First off is the business. The business has to live in order for me and my family to live. Then it's the family. I know that's kind of fucked up. Some of you are going to give me shit in the comments, but whatever. You can't live without money. Anybody who says that you can, you're fucking lying to you, so whatever. Um, so anyway, I handle my business first. I handle my family second. And then comes all the side gigs. Now, this is high on the side gig list because we do have sponsors. There are certain sponsors. They do pay us money. Um, but that, that is all this is is a side gig. And that's the main show. The, the the fantasy podcast is just something that we were like, yo, instead of talking fantasy for 45 minutes on the main show, let's have a show about our fantasy stuff and start a league and give away some prizes and all that crap. So if things don't get done in an order or a fashion that you think they should get done, I do apologize, but too fucking bad. So there are many other things I have to do. And I guess what really uh, what really grinds my gears is that what is what is happening right now. And again, I don't realistically I'd give two shits about what is happening through the comments section right now. Uh, but when you start questioning uh, my character or my word, um, then we start to have fucking issues. So. I uh, I do a very good job of trying to keep the word as best I can. But again, there is an order of importance. And the free shit that I give away on a show that I spend money to fucking do is low on the totem pole of importance. If your life is dependent on the fact that you get your stuff, that you win, which, mind you, what is happening is not even with a winner, but if your life depends on some free shit you won off some dinky ass internet radio show, then we need to talk about your priorities. <laughs> I'm yeah, giving away any better. I'm giving away fucking pain balm and CBD oil. Yep. Nope. That's the, uh, that's the problem with, um, you know, and we, we never, <clears throat> we never thought we would kind of be in this when, you know, when Travis and me started this whole thing back in late 2016, we never, we never even thought it would get this far, you know, Hey, we'll get a couple hundred views. Like we, Travis has said before, like we did this for fun. We already bullshit about moto. Why don't we just take it to an audience? But yeah, we don't, uh, this is not how we make a living. We are not pulp MX. We are not main event moto. We are not all these, you know, whiskey throttle. This is not our, this is not our living. Would it be cool if it was? Of course it would be, but it's not. So here's the funny the thing we have to do. Here's the funny thing. Win something off Pulp MX. It takes months to get it. Mm -hmm. They make mm -hmm. the same announcements we do. The only thing they don't do is they don't get on there and say, oh, I'm going to go today or "Oh, I'm going to do that. Shit comes up. Sorry, dude. I fucking I try the best I can. I try to do what I can. Shit comes up. Which, yeah, by the way, I, like I, I'm going to make the announcement here and I'm going to make it on the fantasy show, too. I know there is someone who won something in the last two months during the Supercross season. Uh, it wasn't last year. It was during the Supercross season. They're, I, I know they're out of Canada and I know I owe them a set of gloves. I could not find the DM. So if that was you and you have a screenshot of the DM where I said, hey, I'll send you some gloves because I don't know if I can send the CBD stuff, you know, over international lines. Uh, please DM me again on Instagram so that I can get that package wrapped up and also sent here with all the other ones because I went through and looked today to see. Mind you, mind you too, out of this entire season, entire season for weekly prizes, the only thing I haven't sent out uh, other than the Canadian one, which is international, which is a whole nother ball game compared to just putting something in my mailbox, there are two that I have not sent out two out of 17. So yeah, it's not like we're giving away a bike, you know, we're giving away a paintball and we're giving away odds and ends stuff. We're not, we're not giving, it's not like we're giving away a $10,000 dirt bike. If that was the case, this would be a completely different conversation. So yes. Yeah. We're uh, like, everybody just calm down, take a breath. You know, we're, we're not as big as pulp. We don't have all these other people working for us. 
just take a deep breath because uh like i said we uh we don't make enough money at this to even say so this is just a passion thing and you know maybe one day we will and things will be different then but as for right now this is not our this is not our job this is not the things that we you know we're making all of our money from so we apologize everything travis said i echo it but there's just sometimes this is going to happen this is going to happen so you guys are just I hate to be rude, but it's the cold, hard truth. You're just going to have to deal with it for the time being and bear with us. And if you don't like it, we're sorry. Don't listen. You can move on. We respect your decision. If you want to stay with us, we appreciate it. But there's nothing we can do about it. We don't have assistance. We don't have all these other people. This is it's just us. So also just an FYI, I want a jersey off of main event motor one time. A jersey. Okay, not fucking pain bomb, not fucking tear offs. I want a jersey off main event motor one time. I believe it was two years ago. I still don't have it. I am not yeah, blowing because up. Yeah, we talked to Toolman. Yeah. We talked to Toolman about it when we had him on last year. I made a mention. I still have not received it. I don't care. I don't fucking care. Okay? It was something I won for free. It was... I don't even remember. I think I was donating. I think that was... I think what ended up happening, it was when... um What's his nuts? Uh, fuck. Who's, uh, who's the guy that helps out Mertz now? Um... Oh, Hayes. Yeah. It was when Hayes got all fucked up. I donated to that cause to help him with some medical bills or whatever. They put me in a drawing. I want a jersey. Somebody's jersey. I don't remember who it was. I don't fucking care. I never got the jersey. I don't fucking care. I'm not blowing them out. I'm fucking YouTube. And then, yeah, it's just, it's fucking stupid. It's fucking stupid. So anyway, sorry. I wasn't really going to go on a rant about that, but it's just one of those things that's like when, when you start attacking my character and start saying, well, your business, like, okay, all right, let's just tone this down. My business gets fucking handled. If my business get makes the money, it gets handled. This side gig is not that. This is like, <laughs> me not shipping your stuff is like me not going to a local race to ride, okay? Doesn't fucking matter. I'm really sorry. Yep. We will get everybody's stuff in due time. If for some reason we get six months or a year down the road and you don't have your stuff, please feel free to message me again and ask like, Hey, I'll be more than happy to either send something out or explain to you why it hasn't been set out yet. Which by the way, just so everyone knows too, cause I know more people listen to this than they do to the, to the, uh, the, fantasy. the fantasy show. So in case you don't listen to the fantasy show, but you played fantasy and you won something in the top three of the league, um, we will get those out to you. I have to get the main prizes from, Dirt Bike Depot, from Meshi, from Kev. So as soon as I get those, I will get them out to you. But if it takes time, it takes time. And I'm sorry, but we will get them to you. Yep. Who the fuck trying to call me right now? I don't know. It's not important. Anyway. <sighs> All right. Race Tech Ramp. <laughs> now, Dirt Bike Depot Ramp. Yeah. Dirt Bike Depot ran of the Night. Actually, Holster Co. <laughs> Holster <laughs> That's Co. That's actually more fitting. Yeah, Holster Co. Uh, I don't know. We I, we have to come up with a creative name for that because that would be a good one, actually. That would actually fit more, yeah. Yeah, we got to come up with something for that. I have to talk to Mike about that. Anyway, okay, let's get into um, let's get into this race recap. 450 race recap. Sorry. Sorry. Justin, you still there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. I heard a click. I was like, oh, shit. Um, no. All right. Uh, 450 race recap going to be brought to us by JT Cycle. Make sure to check them out at uh, jtcycle.com and on Instagram at jtcyclebc. All your gas, gas, husky, uh, errands, gravely, Suzuki, all that kind of good stuff. They help us out. I don't have the read right in front of me. Anyway. Um, okay. 450 race recap. Well, Ando did it, dude. Finished off the year. Seven wins. Four in a row. Four yep, in a row. Ty Tomac. God, he was good last night again. Yeah, I, I'm going to continue to say this, and I know a lot of the people that know I'm not the biggest Tomac fan will say, well, oh, you know, he had the championship wrapped up. He had a knee injury now that we know. He was mailing it in. But, man, I'm still going to stand by what I said. I so wish Detroit would have never happened. Like, yeah, maybe Eli still wins that race, but God, dude, if, if Detroit never happens and Ando doesn't bum up his shoulder and knock his head silly, um, we're having a completely different conversation. And last night, 
uh, I think it's going. I think the title's going down to the wire. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, I mean, I, it, I, uh, it would have yeah. definitely been. Um, I know we we would have not wrapped it up early. That's for sure. So, and I don't and I don't really honestly know. Even if you put because the way that Ando's been riding the last four rounds reminds me of the Ando that was just dominant that night in Arlington in the Triple Crown that should have won all three mains when him and Eli battled and he was just straight up better than Eli. So that's the thing is, is it really makes me wonder. I can't say with certainty that even the Eli that showed up that clicked off those, you know, the five in a row or whatever it was after from Detroit on who wins between those two guys. Because the thing is, is that the guy that was the Anderson that showed up before Detroit he was faster than Eli. Yes. Eli beat him a few times, but Anderson, that guy was faster than Eli straight up. So I don't know if you can say with certainty that, Oh yeah, Eli still would have won. I think it would have gone down to the last round. I think it would have been a hell of a battle, but I don't, I can't say with certainty. I don't know about you, but I can't say with certainty that Eli still would have won the title because Anderson proved up to that point that he was faster than Eli. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. It would have definitely been a lot more interesting. Uh, but the West Coast series would have been a lot more interesting too had, you know, Hunter Lawrence not gone down at the end of A three there. So yeah. you know, shoulda, coulda, woulda. Um, but man, it doesn't uh, or it bodes well for next year, man. So well, even outdoors too. Yeah, bodes really well for outdoors. So yep. yeah, Anderson's just God. He's been so good the last four rounds. The same thing with Eli, though. Well, those wins, those five in a row, or whatever it was, like Anderson, he's yeah. just been so good the last four rounds, and nobody's been on his level. Yep. Um, okay, second place, Chase Sexton. <sighs> okay, question for you. Was mm-hmm. he a tick off? Was he keeping it in control, or did he just not have it last night? Um, I think he was just a tick off because he pretty much kept the gap when he got into second, and he was kind of finding his flow because the biggest thing that he was doing, and I don't – I mean – it's crazy to think we didn't really see a lot of Anderson last night because he was just so in control in both of his races, but the three, three, three before the sand, I think it was only Sexton and Marv. And I know Ando did it, but I think it was Sexton and Marv, the only ones who were really doing it. It took Sexton a little bit to get that dialed in, in the main. So before that he lost, he lost the, uh, he lost a little bit of a gap to Ando, but once he closed back up with him, I mean, he kind of kept it within between two and four seconds. So I would just say he was kind of a tick off. Like, I don't think he was going to win no matter what, but I don't think it was like, oh, he was just – he didn't have it. Like, his speed was there. Like, I think he was matching Anderson's pace by a few, you know, tents here and there. But I just – I would say that he was in control, but I will also say he was just maybe a tick off, you know? All right. Well, we'll see. Yeah, we'll I don't, see how I next don't, year – they uh, Daniel I, Blair touched on it. Of uh, he's, he's got the speed, and as soon as he learns to respect the 450 – he will be very, very good. He's he's already he'll be great. He's very good right now. He'll be great as soon as he learns how to respect it and how to control it. Right now, See, as you've I said, just, as you've said multiple yeah. times, he is just going too much on instinct and and you know flow, and it bites him and it bites him. But mm-hmm. if he can figure out how to kind of control it and just like tone it back's the wrong thing, but just tone it in a little bit. Oh man, it's yep. going to be glorious. So we'll see. I, yep. he, 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 I just don't know if he ever will. To yeah. be honest with you. Well, I my, my I, thing I, is, is like, does he get it figured out in time before some of these kids make the jump and all of a sudden there's a whole new crop and they're, you know, cause I mean, look at AC, we've been kind of saying yeah. the same thing without AC and he hasn't done it yet. So what makes us lead to believe that chases can do it? You yeah. Know. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. We'll have to see. All right. Here we go. Now we're getting into the story storylines here. Third place, oh, yeah. Barsha. Fourth place, Stu. Dude, that was dirty. Hey, you know what, though? You know what? As much as I hate MX Sports, and keep in mind, I just said MX Sports, not AMA. <laughs> uh, they, you know what, man? They told Barsha after they find him at the beginning of the year is on probation. You do some stuff with it like this again, you're going to regret it. And guess what? He did. He got Doc 10 points. Yep. He ended up fifth in the points. Didn't get that third place bonus. Uh, so you know what? <laughs> he he fucked up. He fucked up. And the AMA or, I mean, MX Sports told him, like, hey, you know what? You do this again, you're going to regret it. And yeah. sure as shit, he regretted it because I can tell you what. 
obviously I don't know the ins and outs of Barsha's contract, but I can tell you this, if it goes off anybody else's contract, it's a huge different for, difference between getting third in the points and getting fifth in the points. Yep. Well, he didn't have third anyway when the race was over. Stu still had him by two points. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, so like, yep. he didn't get third anyway. But, dude, that was <sighs> – I'm here to tell you. First off, I'm very sad that we didn't see Stu and him come back together later in that race because I totally thought we were going to see that. Like, I don't know, though, if we ever were, though, because kind of like they were talking on the broadcast, you know, Ricky and AC, like you could tell Ricky was kind of like, well, you know, I could kind of, and he was trying to be, he was trying to be diplomatic. He wasn't trying to say something stupid, but you know, in the back of his mind, he goes, yeah, if that was me out there, I'd have blasted the shit out of it if I would have got the chance. Yep. And then AC's like, yeah, it'd be cool to just see him just pass him straight up, just kind of be, you know, the bigger man. And, uh, I just wasn't going to lead to believe that Malcolm would have ran it in on him because then it's a retaliation thing. And then he gets the bad end of that stick and maybe he gets fine. But dude, it was, it was blatant. It was a, it was an old school Barsha Bam Bam 250 style takeout. But see, here's the thing. And I've said this before multiple with people and I'm not the only person. Everybody says this when you pass Barsha. It doesn't matter who you are. You need to anticipate that he's going to try to run it up in the inside of you. Oh, yeah. So you kind of got to look and go, it was kind of Malcolm's fault. Like, he should have known. He's been down this road with Barsha before. They've been racing each other for a very long time. Yep. Don't leave the door open. Yep. Do not leave the door open. And guess what? Am I am I condoning what Barsha did? No. Look, I like aggressive riding, and you can bump them, make them know that you're there. But that was an obvious blatant takeout where some of the ones early this year have been kind of a little bit gray areas. This one was black and white, like Barsha straight up. He didn't even arc the corner. Like, dude, he just went straight for the exit, like Chad Reed, yeah. James Stewart style. Well, even but even even AC said, I mean, dude, that was as close to getting to a head on collision as you're going to get. I mean, I mean, dude, he hit Malcolm so hard. Obviously, not only did a high side Malcolm, but it pitched Barsha's front end inwards. He yeah. hit him that hard. So yeah. it's like. But it's like, dude, once again, you also got to kind of give the guy who passes Barsha, you got to blame them a little bit because it's like, dude, you you should know. You, We've been watching Barsha do this for long enough now. We've been watching him do this since 2009. Mm -hmm. You should know. So it's kind of also Malcolm's fault in a sense because it's like, well, dude, what do you think was going to happen? Yeah. What, what did you think what he was going to do? Oh, yeah. No, I mean, here's the thing. I, I give it to Barsha that he got on the podium for that speech with all the booze and owned it like, Yo. like some friend of shit from 2020. Oh yeah. But I, <laughs> as I told Ashley in the truck today, when we were driving to Menards, I said, look, I give Stu a ton of credit because Barsha does that to me. We're fucking fighting right in front of that podium there. Like I would have got off my bike and I'd have ripped him off his. Like yeah, he he thinks but, he thinks I hit the ground hard. I'd have slammed him off that bike and started just beating the shit out of him. See, Don't care. Thing, I'd, have, I'd have walked right in that AMA trailer and handed him my card and been like, swipe it for whatever the fine is. I don't fucking care. I would have see, beat see, the, the shit thing, out of him. It's easy for us to sit up and say this, though. But then you got to think about in real time that not only it's AMA he has to deal with, it's going to be his bosses at Husky. And AMA, that's one thing. But when you start dealing with the team that employs you. Yeah. It's it's not that easy, man. Like I said, I, I know that you think you would do that at the time, but when you got all that going on, if if he does that, if he actually goes out and does that with the way things work in the world now, he gets fired. Like Husky is not keeping him. They're firing him because they're going to have so much backlash that their top rider just literally beat the shit out of somebody, which we know that Malcolm Wood, he is not a small man. He would beat the shit out of him. You're going to get fired, and then it's going to be a real hard time. So like I said – it's easy for us to sit up and say we would do this and we would do that. But then when it's actually happening and you have to realize that he would get fired, like I will argue this with anybody, he would get fired from Husky Yeah, probably. and no team would employ him. There goes your career. So it's like, is it really worth it? Because it's not, it's not worth never riding for a team ever again to, Oh, you beat the hell out. Like you beat the shit out of him. Okay, cool. Yeah. You just got a whole bunch of money taken away and now you never ride dirt bikes again. It's, and, been, it's been a good run. Okay. So uh, here's the thing. If they fire me, what the fuck am I going to pay the fine for? Fine. What do you mean, the AMA fine? Yeah. No, no, yeah, you wouldn't have to, but see, here's the thing. That's the bigger thing. I don't think the fine would be the issue. It's the getting fired is the issue. Yeah, you know what? It's been a good career. And that one, you're Malcolm Stewart, and all you know is how to ride dirt bikes. Like I said, 
me and Barsha would have been fu- he would have he would have never fucking touched me again because I'd have beat the shit out of him. Yeah, man, I, I got to totally disagree with you on that. I don't think I don't think in that situation you would do that. You would realize that the moment you threw a punch, your career's over with and you don't do anything else. Yeah, yeah it's not it's not worth it. They it's, used, it's they just used to not. do it. They used to do it in the 90s. It's fine. Yeah, but the 90s were different. There were not as many eyes on the sport back then. Yeah. I don't know, man. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. If they do that, if they do that and I get fired and then they fucking put that shit, that video up on what's it called? I'm mm. suing the AMA. I'm suing Feld. I'm suing everybody for fucking, I don't know, defamation of character or something because I'm going to be like, look, dude, if I'm going to get fired over this after I fucking beat the shit out of him, but then you're going to use it to advertise. Guess what? You're going to pay me. I won't have to work because you're going to pay me. So I mean, maybe. I mean, maybe. I think that would be a fairly easy lawsuit. Like, I don't know. But anyway, like I said, Malcolm luckily is a much more patient fellow. Although he did say in his interview, we're going to go back and talk about this. And I was like, oh, yeah, let's go. Yeah, just, let's let's go with the cameras. Means. I just don't know what that means. Like, what? He's going to have a conversation with him like he did with Marv where he's yelling and screaming at him? Okay, cool. But it's like, dude, once again, it's the same thing I said when I got you know heated about the whole Phil Nicoletti thing at the beginning of the year. These guys need to realize they're not MMA fighters and they don't actually know how to fight. So it's like, calm down. Like, none of you actually know how to fight. I mean, I used to fight. What? I used to fight. I used to beat the shit out of people in hockey all the time, and now I'm standing on my feet. I don't even got to stand on skates, so this is even easier now. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, is that these guys, like, they can act all big and tough. And once again, Malcolm, just like Weston Pike, not a small man, <laughs> but they're not actually they're not actually fighters. They go up against anybody who can actually fight, and they're going to get the shit kicked out of them. So it's like, calm down. You don't fight for a living. You get your ass beat by anybody that can fight. Calm down. Yeah. That's my thing. I just don't like the whole tough guy act. I just don't. Look, we all know that our guys, in my opinion, are the gnarliest dudes in the world, anything related. But if it comes to actually throwing hands, and you can talk to Chris Cooksey about that because he's a perfect example, these guys are going to get the shit kicked out of them, plain and simple. It's mm-hmm. not even It's not even a conversation. So, I just look, it's, it's something to talk about, and it adds drama to our sport that we kind of need. But it's like when I hear the whole tough guy thing, oh, I'm going to do this and that. Calm down, bro. Calm down. (laughs) You're a badass because you ride a dirt bike. But as far as fighting, most of these dudes couldn't fight their way out of a paper bag. I don't know. It sounds like it'd be awesome. Speaking of which, did you you ever listen to the, was it Carrie Hart interview that Weege did? Uh, no, I remember I, li- I did listen though when he was on whiskey throttle a while ago, some of the interview, but no, I've, I'm, I don't know. I like Kerry Hart, but I'm not a, like a huge fan of his. So the one he did with Weege, there was some interesting stuff in there. So he was talking about the, uh, the, the guy who did the marketing for Dodge when they had Dodge as a sponsor and, oh. uh, fuck, what was it? Was it Weston Pike or somebody? And, uh, God, I can't remember. I think it was somebody that wrote for them. And they mm-hmm. were they were jawing at each other up the tunnel or whatever, and then like yeah. so they the camera got him going up the tunnel just like screaming at each other. Him and so, maybe it wasn't Pike, maybe it was uh, Tickle or somebody. I don't know. Anyway, one of the riders was jawing at somebody else going up the tunnel. They like you just tell they were screaming at each other. And the the Dodge guy called Kerry and he's like, "Why the fuck is the TV crew not back in the pits watching what these guys are doing?" Like yeah. whether they're doing anything or not, you know, and, and Carrie was like, this was, this was what we, you know, what we had, like they were super into it, but they like came from the NASCAR side where it was like, look, if there's drama like that happening. Get that shit on video so we can use yeah. it. Like, you know, it's like, I mean, it, it wouldn't surprise me if it was Weston. I don't, yeah, I don't remember. I but feel again, like though, I don't know too many dudes that would want to fuck with Weston because yeah. Weston actually trains, actually trains MMA in his, in his side time. So like, I don't really yeah. know. But I mean, maybe it had to. If it was a, if it was an RCH guy, it had to either be Tickle Hill or Weston. Yeah, I don't like. I said I don't remember, but it was just funny because this this Dodge guy who's in charge of their marketing or whatever is literally like, why are we not, why are we not exploiting this? Like, why do we not see these guys actually yelling at each other? Why do we not see what the, see them back of the truck screaming at each other across the way or whatever? And so you know, it's just like it's just like last night. Like Malcolm gets off that bike and pulls 
pulls <laughs> Barsha off that bike, pulls Barsha off his <laughs> bike, even if he doesn't punch him, just pulls him off the bike. Yeah. Like, look, motherfucker, don't fucking do that again. I mean, yeah. That it's is drama. That is it's drama. Selling. Oh, like, you want to see the sport on ESPN? That right there will put you on ESPN. Like, oh for sure. I don't. I don't so, disagree at all. Uh, it's it's a drama thing. It's just for me. Like I'm looking at it and going like, okay, guys, like calm down. And I know that NASCAR. There's been enough. Enough people have seen the videos of all the shit that, you know, I'm pretty sure that it's the Bush brothers, Kurt or Kyle Bush, have been into with people. Yeah. You know, Wab, Juan Pablo Montoya. Like he's been. So it's like. It's drama, but it's like, dude, our sport's already fucking dangerous enough, and now you're going to try to go out and hit somebody. And I don't know if you've ever, like, and the hockey is different because obviously the, you guys' helmets were different. Go try and hit somebody with a full-face helmet on and see how your hand feels afterwards because it's not going to feel good. I don't care how hard you punch. You punch a full-face helmet on without a glove or even with a glove, nine times out of ten, you're going to break your hand. Oh, so dude, it's yeah. Like, I, would never, I would never actually punch them in the helmet. Like, and that's what I mean, though. So it's like, what are you going to do? Okay, you're going to tackle him. Okay, you get him on the ground, and now you got all this. Now you're on the ground. Coming, coming, you're going to be coming strategically from a hockey fighter who f- had to yeah. fight guys in helmets until yeah. the helmet comes off. The glove didn't come off, and in this case, the gloves don't have padding. So yeah. my my whole trick to this, and this would be if I end up in a fight at some point in the pits at a local race would be mm. to literally grab them by the mouth guard of the helmet and just mm. throw and just control their head to throw uppercuts up under oh, sure. their helmet. Like that that's the only way to do it. Yeah, no, if you're trying for to sure. if you're trying to punch them in the eye, you're fucking stupid. Like you're never going to get your hand through that fucking hole and all you're going to do is hit the helmet and break your fucking hand or something. Like no, nah, that's stupid. Look, if I'm getting in a fight in my gear, the first thing I'm doing is I don't even care about that shit. I'm taking my boots off because I'm I don't taking know if you try my to run boots around off. In, I don't know if you try to run around in dirt bike boots, but obviously it's not the easiest thing. So like, dude, I got that lateral movement now. My boots are off. <laughs> <laughs> I got so much lateral move. You know what? Let me just give me a sec i need to take my boots off i gotta cut my fucking <laughs> pants down into shorts so i got more lateral exactly. movement even though i got shorts underneath them i'm gonna cut the pants you exactly. know like you it's, know i'm just getting naked i'm just getting naked, just getting nobody, naked. Fights a naked guy. nobody fights a naked guy i'm gonna get naked i'm gonna shit in my hand and i'm gonna slap you with it like this is what's about okay. to happen okay well this this just turned into a weird podcast all of a sudden <laughs> it's totally fine anyways fetishes are us.com oh, oh boy all right so moving from that wasn't dirt. the only drama, though. That wasn't the only drama. Made. We'll get into the next drama here with these next two. Marvin Muskin, fifth. Cooper Webb, sixth. Look, I, we know that Marv is not afraid to T-bone people. I don't. Here's the thing. I don't have any issue with what Marv did. No, dude. Coop was uh, Coop was doing what he has done this entire year. He was a roadblock. He was he, in the way all night. He was Marv in the way. But, at it. He was in the way in the fucking heat race. He was in the way in the main event. And yeah, at some point... Marv was like, dude, get out of the way. Because honestly, as good as Marv rode in the heat race and in practice, I thought he had stood a chance of winning this race. I thought the track oh, I was did too. I, I thought did the too. track was perfect for him. It was short technical rhythm sections with tight ass turns. Like mm-hmm. I dude, well, I thought it look, was fucking great. And look, Ricky even said it. That first lap when or not the first lap, whatever it was when Marv closed the no, yeah, obviously it wouldn't have been the first lap. Whatever lap it was that Marv closed the gap on Coop when he threed out of the rhythm section of the right hander, when he was on the inside of him, when he missed the inside rut, Ricky's like, dude, he was nice. He could have ran it in so much deeper on him. And he's like, Nope, my teammate, I'm not going to take us both out. And then he sat back there for like, what was it like three or four laps. And like, he's just got to be thinking, dude, come on. Like, what are you doing? Like, Oh yeah. Just get out of the way. He's like, it's like, just move. And I understand that Coop is in a position this year that he hasn't been in since the 2018 season where literally, even if he gets to start, he starts dropping back very quickly and he literally becomes a roadblock. So it's kind of him having to relearn how to still try to hold his line and move forward, but also having in the back of his mind that like, Hey, I'm not as fast as these dudes. I don't have the outright speed. I have the race craft and kind of the old saying, I have eyes in my back of my head. But the problem is, is that these dudes are moving forward so much quicker than me that the stuff that I've been doing for the last three years, isn't going to help me. So it's like, I understand that it's not, he hasn't been used to this for a while, but it's like, dude, at some point, you got to have the etiquette of, dude, get the fuck out of the way. Get yeah. the fuck out of the way. Yeah. You know, and this this isn't a Vince Free situation. People are like, oh, he's a roadblock. Like, where Vince was literally just doing everything to hold on because, hey, like, his livelihood depended on every position. Coop just re-signed with – or signed the deal with KTM. Look, he goes backwards. Is it a good look? No. But it's not like, oh, it's costing him a whole bunch of money to go from fucking third to sixth. Yeah. Well, and here here's my question for you. 
does next year go any better? Um, we clearly know that he's been dealing with some issues since Detroit. Now, obviously, it wasn't great beforehand, but I would hope so because that's look, a, this because now it's going to be a year under the with pause. The bike. Pause. The issues are not physical. No, no. Like he's dealing with an injury, injuries like everybody else. So I'm not saying that that's his issue. What I'm saying is, I was mentioning that is because we know he's been dealing with something, but so is everyone else. What I was getting at is, is that I would like to think he's going to be better because this has been a bike issue the entire year. Mm-hmm. The bike we, I really would think is going to be better going into next year. But the problem is, is that the dude that only the only dude that did anything for you the entire year is not even going to be on your team next year. He's being forced into retirement, kind of. So it's like maybe I would like to think that this year was just it was out of the norm. It, it was not wire. This was not Cooper Webb. All of a sudden, is not went from winning two championships in three years or two championships in four years now to all of a sudden now he's a seven eighth place guy. Like look. The speed is higher than ever. The talent level is higher than ever. But I can tell you this, that I can look at this year and then look at last year. And Cooper Webb all of a sudden didn't just lose like a bunch of speed or on the flip side of that, all of a sudden everybody just got like exponentially better. Like they've gotten mm-hmm. better, yes, but not that much better. So I have a hard time believing that this is now who Cooper Webb is. So I would like to think that this year is going to be better. But once again, who knows? Because – Eli, as we know, fucking just resigned. So Eli's coming back. Anderson, we obviously know, is going to be coming in more confidence than ever. Confidence than ever. Uh, Sexton, when he stays on two wheels, is obviously going to be fast. Mookie's better than ever. Barsha is still going to be Barsha. Uh, but whoever comes up from the 250 class, so there is going to be still the same. It's still going to be just as difficult. But I have a hard time believing that if Coop is 2021 Coop, that he's still getting seventh and eighth place or whatever the fuck he's been getting the last however many rounds. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I mean, here, my question is, it's like, you've had all year to try to figure this bike out and we have not So, I mean, I guess it's the only question that I'll pose is it's the only question I'll pose is, is that if you take 21, 2021 Cooper Webb on that 2021 bike and you insert him into this year, do you still see him getting seventh and eighth? Because I have a hard time believing that that's happening. I don't know because I don't think it's a physical thing. I think it's all mental. I think there's okay, a so lot. Speed. I think there's a lot so going on behind the scenes at that team that we're not privy to. I mean, we're not privy to it, but it's not hard to connect the dots. He's with a trainer. But then that's the thing, though. He leaves the trainer like four rounds in. He's now back with the old trainer. We we've heard he doesn't want to be there, but the team is forcing him to be there now. And we're hearing the bike has been shit all year from. Everybody who's been on the 22, whether it's the Husky, KTM, whatever, we're all we're all hearing that the bike is shit. So, but see, that's the thing, though. Then that's that stuff. That stuff is fixable. The speed is if it's all of a sudden he's just not fast enough anymore, which once again it's hard to lose that much speed in a year. That's what I'd be more concerned about. That's then that's my thing is is that if a lot of people think it's that stuff, which we know it is, Mm -hmm. that stuff is fixable. If he's just all of a sudden a second and a half slower because he just is a second and a half slower, that's a different conversation. But like I said, I will pose the question. You take 2021 Cooper Webb, the dude that won the title, you put him on the 2021 bike and insert him into this championship. Do you still see him getting the same spots? Because I have a hard time believing he does. No, I think he's more relevant, but we're not on the he's, 20, the, he's winning not, races. We're not on the 2021 anymore though. So I understand that. So, but that's the thing though, is if you're linking the conversation of the question, it's, is it speed or is it the other bullshit? And if you're saying speed, then that's a different conversation. But if you're saying, which we all believe is the other stuff, then I'm not as worried. That stuff is fixable. If he's just all well, of a sudden slower, that's going to be harder to fix. It's, it's fixable, but not if you're with the same team, dude. Because yeah, I think there's I think there's a lot going on with that team and him that is not jiving at right at the current moment, which is why we're seeing what we're seeing Hello. out of him, which is why we're seeing Hello. a lot of what? Oh, you were cutting out, man. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I think there's I think there's a lot going on with that team that is just not jiving, and which is why we're see, seeing what we're, we're seeing. And I don't know, I don't see, I don't see that getting better. the The bike, maybe they can make it better. Maybe we'll see. Maybe this generation bike's just a turd. Maybe that's well, what it is. Marv proved, Marv proved that that's not entirely true, though. 
yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know. We'll have but to here's see. The thing, though. Here's the thing, though. Okay, say next year is a dud once again ever, and he's a little bit better. But it's the same thing that we were talking about this after Atlanta. He goes to star when he goes back to star in 2024 and he starts winning again. Then nobody gives a shit because yeah. we all will go, well, it wasn't actually him. It was everything around him, which I'm not saying that he's going to just win. But it's the hypothetical of if he does go back, if he, when he goes back to star and he does start winning again, we can go, well, you know what, then actually Cooper Webb is the guy that we thought and it had really nothing to do with him and it had to do with everything else. Yeah. And guess what? We're never remembering this conversation ever again. Yep. Yep. Nope. Nope. You're, you're right. You're right. So I don't know, man. We'll see. The only time will tell. Now, yep. the move that Marv put on him, though, I don't have any issue with it. Oh, no, dude. I don't. Uh, okay. Now, All now. right. Great. We're on yeah, same I mean, page. dude, he could. Yeah, if if I mean, dude, with how far he was inside Coop and where Coop was when he start when Marv started hitting the exiting of the corner, yeah. if he wanted to, he could have pulled a Barshawn Ando and Indy and just sawed off his front end if he wanted to. Yeah. All right, moving so, on here. No, I have uh, no issue. All right, so the rest of these guys, as we go down here, if we don't have anything really super important to say, let's not uh, waste time. Justin Brayton, final race, start number one ninety. It's great. great. Good job. Seventh place. A uh, heart raft, eighth place. That was cool. Well, we need okay. That I'll, I'll stop you because there's only a few more guys that I'll even say anything about. Yeah, we need to give Brandon Hartraft the credit that he deserves because, dude, he has had a quiet, good fucking year. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be He's real honest good, with you. I'm He's a real good fucking you. rider. <laughs> he is not getting the credit that he deserved because, dude, he has had a great freaking year. And I don't want to hear, oh, well, all the guy that all everybody wasn't there. I don't give a shit. <laughs> he made it through the whole entire season and they didn't. That's their problem, yep. not his. Yep. He's had a good year. He's growing. He's, he's growing year. in. He's growing into that 450 class very quickly here, and it's you know. And I think it, his outdoor season is going to be better. Yeah, and it was like like we said, it was a rough start for him, but he got thrown yep. in the 450 class way early. He'd gotten like, he two ready. podiums in the 250 class. He'd only been in there a couple of years, and then boom, the team folds, and now he's forced to go try to find a ride. He finds a ride in the HEP Suzuki team, and now he's building his career up essentially so i think it's only a matter of time before he's consistently top 10 no matter who's there but we'll have to see so well he's just consistent man he's just consistent he's not flashy he doesn't have a cardio issue he doesn't have the outright speed but he's kind of like chiz in the sense that he just he just Just grinds away and he yeah and yeah and he just knows how to finish races so you know what congrats to brandon hartraft that's freaking awesome and like i said i stand by it i think his outdoor season gonna be even better yep um, all right, Starling ninth, Brees tenth. Good on him. Yep, Chiz eleventh. Uh, Bogle whole shots leads the first lap, fades to twelve. I think he's over it. I think he's over it, man. I think he's over it. Yeah, I think so too. Well, he's not riding outdoors. Well, I didn't know that. That's I, news to me. At least Wonder, I thought that's well, what I heard. I, I mean, know. it wouldn't. I mean, I like I said, I haven't heard that, but it wouldn't shock me. But see, here's the thing, though, is, is that. Obviously, Hartraft is riding outdoors, but if Bogle's not, is Entiknap riding outdoors? Because even though he has before, he's not the biggest fan. So I have a hard time believing the HEP is going to go outdoors with just Brandon Hartraft. I don't know. Maybe he is. I don't know. I thought I heard that. I'm not sure. I mean, if he's if he's not, if he's not, it wouldn't shock me. But I'm just wondering that if he doesn't go outdoors, and I wouldn't be totally shocked if Entiknap doesn't go outdoors. That means that Hep's going to be looking for another guy because there's no way, even though with everything I just said, I stand by. They go outdoors with us, Brandon Hartraft. Antiknap doesn't ride outdoors. Well, no, he or, doesn't ride outdoors, but he has. Or he only does select ones. No, he's not. That's what I mean. He's not riding outdoors. I have heard that. He's not riding outdoors. Okay, so, so if he's not riding outdoors and Bogle's not riding outdoors, then that means that HEP is looking for another dude because they have shit that they – obligations they need to fulfill – they're not just going with hard draft outdoors. There's no way. So that means that they're probably looking for another dude. So that's actually an interesting story that nobody's even talking about. If yeah. Bogle isn't riding outdoors. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I thought I heard that somewhere, but I might be wrong. I'm not 100% on that. So we'll have to do some research on yeah. that. Anyway, uh, Palatelli, 13th. Amart, 14th. Moran's came up to 15th. That was good on him because he was floating around awesome. 18, 19 for our first few laps. Uh, Rod yeah. Bell, 16th. Bryson Gardner, 17th. Surratt got in at 18th. Carnell and Carney Asada, 19th. Benny crashed, 20th. Awesome. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Yep. Does really yep. awesome for my fucking fantasy. Clayson Uh-oh. must have crashed, too, 21st. Again, awesome. Thanks. Fucked my fantasy. And uh, I don't know how Jeremy Hand came back from having his arm twisted in a fucking wheel oh, two I rounds know. ago to make the main this week and finish 22nd, but whatever. 
That 450 LCQ, though, at the end was wild, man. God, I feel bad for John Short. Holy shit. Have you seen the the one where the guy did the meme that or uh, did the did the TikTok to move bitch on that no. with that whole thing happening? Holy shit, that was awesome. I mean, it's liter- yeah. it's literally you just see fucking uh, what's his nut short going down, and then fucking Kev hitting him and everything. It's just like move, bitch, get out the um, way. <laughs> could you just imagine? Even though it was never going to happen, but could you just imagine had Surratt? not got around on the outside and somehow stanky fucking gets into the main. Dude, last night. I know. Right. Oh my God. It I was thought going to happen. And, and that was never in my mind. Did it cross it, but I'm just thinking, dude, if Surratt doesn't tiptoe through that chaos that that was and stanky somehow gets in, dude, that crowd was going to go fucking crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. That was, that was wild. Um, I definitely was like yelling at the TV because I was like, oh, fuck, Kev just went down. Fuck, 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 fuck. Like I saw it as I saw it happening. I was like, oh, my God, Kev's going to hit him. Kev's going to hit that's him. A, and that's another thing, too, uh, that just a little, you know, just a little bit of credit to Kev about him being a racer and just another guy that just grinds through these mains. And this is not a shot of Kev. Kev was just off the entire day, which is crazy because how well he rode in the LCQ challenge. For anybody who's know, he got second in that behind Chiz. He was just off the entire day. And Rod Bell, Jeremy Hand, all those dudes were straight up faster than him. And guess what? He beat them all in the main. So it's yeah, like that was not a Kev style track, though. No, no. But but that's but my point is, is that he was off the entire day. And once again, this is not me throwing a shade at Kev. It's just me being honest, was one of the slower guys in the 450 out of the guys that made the main. And he still ended up 15th. Yeah. So that's just credit to Kev that once again, kind of like with Chiz, kind of like with Hartraft. He just grinds through these mains and is just consistent and doesn't have these fluctuations. And he just gets it done, man. Because like I said, Rod Bell checked out on him. Yeah. So did Hand. Yeah. Before, oh, yeah. Even before the crash. Oh, yeah. So it's like that's a credit to Kev. So in a sense, I'm critiquing Kev, but I'm also giving him a lot of credit. Because if those do – like if, if that goes how the that whole day goes, that's how the main goes, Kev probably gets like 20th or 21st based on speed. Yeah. But he just made it through the main. So that's a so that's just a credit to Kev. That's just a credit to Kev that he is a racer and he's not one of these one lap heater guys. He's just solid. So and that fifteenth actually does it tie his best or is that his best now? Because Detroit was his best. Was that sixteenth? Yeah, I think it ties his best. I think he I think he okay, got fifteenth awesome. before. I don't know. We'll have to, we'll have to right. ask him that's, if I get him on the phone here. So Yep. Um all right, cool. So that's four fifty class. Uh we touched on it too. Tomac re signed for twenty three. Uh, which yep. will probably be his last year. That means he's rode the yeah, 23, yeah. which means he feels comfortable on the 23. So, yep. okay, cool. Awesome. All right, moving on to 250s here. 250s going to be brought to you by our friends at Gutterworks Gutters. Check them out. Links in the description below. Gutterworks Seamless Gutters. When I get a house mm-hmm. one day, they will have Gutterworks Gutters on them. It's going to be awesome. There so, you go. All right, so... Let's get started here. Well, Nate Thrasher wins Fuck yeah. wins a fucking race. One out of ten ain't bad, bro. One out of ten Dude, decent look, races man. ain't bad. Hold on. I just want to read you his results for the year here because I knew we were going to start arguing about this. So let me just Don't read care. the results for your guys' this newly care. crowned second coming of Christ fucking rider. Don't here. care. Don't okay? care. Don't okay? care. Okay. Hold on. Do not care. Hold on. Do let not just, care. Let me just Don't read care. you this. You don't care about his results. He won a no, fucking race. Yep, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. I don't care about you his results. You know what? He Fuck won, it. He won the race. Sign him to the Star 450 team. I'm sure he can win the title next year. See, now you're exaggerating. No, you're exaggerating this is how now. stupid you guys sound with this. Oh, he's so no, fucking man, good. He's not. so you're, fucking you're good. It, you're make, Sweet. You're he won a fucking shootout. How many random people have he won a fucking Hunter, shootout? Did, did Hunter, and he won did two fucking try. races, weirdo races last year, okay? Did Hunter did Hunter not was he not trying in that race? I am not saying that the kid is a complete shitball spode that we should just roll up and throw out the mm-hmm. fucking door. What I'm yep. s- trying to tell you guys is he is not that great okay he is he great, is he is great a, because the win of he, supercross race is a big deal he is a solid secondary guy on any fucking team he will not, not true. he will not i do not see him winning a title well hunter lawrence hasn't won a title yet 
Hunter Lawrence won four fucking races this year. Okay, and guess what? Nate Thrasher won one of them out of only three other dudes, or actually two other dudes outside of Hunter and Nate. The only other guys to win one was Moseman and the champion Christian Craig. Same thing on the East. The thing that I issue with what the issue that I have with what you're saying is, is you're making it sound like winning a Supercross race is all of a sudden an easy thing. It doesn't matter what it is. I didn't say it was say easy. Like, he won a so, shootout, though, dude. He, but he won also beat a shootout Lawrence, at the end of the year. But he beat Hunter Lawrence. He beat Hunter Lawrence when Hunter was trying, and the guy that just won three in a row, a guy that was actually trying to go out and win the race because his thing was, I need to win the race, and whatever happens with Christian happens with him. That's a big deal. You just beat the guy that won three in a row that we were all sitting up on our show talking about, dude, Hunter, like he looks like one of the fastest guys, if not the fastest dude, and he straight up beat Hunter. He actually caught and passed Hunter and was gapping him. All right. So it is a big deal. It doesn't matter if it's one out of ten because when you make comments like that and you bring up your example was, oh, I talked about Zacho, it's a completely different situation. And when you say stuff like that, it makes it like, well, you're actually talking bad about your boy because then who gives a shit that Zacho won that fucking race? It was one race that he's ever won on a 450, and he got it handed to him because the guy that he beat I wasn't talking bad about seat. my boy. I was saying my boy's no, no, fucking you're coming. Talking bad about, you're and talking then we had a then we him. had a back issue, which I didn't foresee coming, talking, and now here we talking, are. But you're, you're not listening. You're talking bad about him when you make a comment like, oh, Nate won one race. Zacho only won one race, and it was – a fucking fluke deal. Mm -hmm. So when you say comments like Nate winning one race is not a big deal. Well, I could throw it back at you like, well, Zach only won fucking one race. And guess what? He actually got that race handed to him. Actually, unlike Nate, who actually, actually had to I'm, battle for that win. I'm pretty sure Zach won a shit ton of 250 fucking Supercross We're not talking races. about 250s. We're talking about 450. Okay. Because well, you brought up the conversation of 450. You didn't bring up 250. All right. It's not the same thing. All right, fine. Let me peg this right here. I do not see Nate Thrasher ever winning a 450 race. Okay, and I never said he would. I never said he would win a 450 I mean, dude, race. We're talking you, about right now. The way you guys are coming at me, dude, this kid, fuck, dude. I mean, we need to sign him to a 450. He is better than Jeff No, Lawrence. no, see, see with now finish, you're With finishes you're, you're, like 12, 5, 8, 4, 7, 21, 11, 5, 9. How many wins does he have now as a and professional? One. He's got three. He's got three. He's got three wins. He's got three. And how many other people in that? Cl- how many other people in the both coasts have three wins or more? Fuck you got Jet know. Lawrence, Christian Craig, and Hunter Lawrence. That's it. That's it. Out of all the dudes, Fortner. So you can talk about Weirdo races. Fortner's got a bunch. Okay, of Fortner. Wins. Okay, so you got Fortner, Jet, Hunter, and Christian. That's it. Mm-hmm. And McAdoo might have three, but look how long McAdoo's been in the class. Okay, yeah. So McAdoo too. Yep. Is there anybody okay. else we're missing so, off PC? Because I feel like we're missing someone off PC who's no, like, how many Joe does Hamm- how many how many does Hammaker have? Hammaker's got one. Joe's okay. got one. Obviously, Jet Reynolds is a rookie. Joe, and Joe won a that's race. It. Yeah, Joe won the fucking the last race last year before the sh- uh before the shootout. Oh. All right. So that's my issue. With, that's my issue with what you're saying. You're exaggerating and it's taken way too far look, to dude, make your point. Look, dude, we we started the year of you guys fucking coming at me hot, telling me how good he was. And I told and you guys and I told did you he guys he ain't that good. He but see, you can't say comments like that when you win the fucking race, because then you're when you say comments like that, you're basically throwing a brick into Hunter Lawrence's face last night. Because you're making it sound like, oh, it's not that fucking hard to win a race when Hunter, when I'm pretty sure, fucking was giving it everything <laughs> I, I, he had last night. I didn't say it wasn't hard to win a race. What I'm yep. saying is, is that you guys talked about him like he was going to be some fucking god and battling all year. And then, I think if I, I read, if I read the these fucking finishes here, I mean, like, you, you, okay, you want to compare him to fucking Hunter Lawrence? Hunter no, Lawrence's Hunter him, Lawrence's finishes, Hunter Lawrence. average finish is fucking probably 15 spots better than Thrasher's. And see, here's the thing. How many wins does Hunter Lawrence have since he's been in Supercross? I don't fucking know. So he's got like five, maybe? Five? Four? No, because yeah. he won three this year. No, he's got three this year, and he won one last year, so he's got four. That's one more than Nate Thrasher has total in his career. I thought he, I thought, I thought thought Hunter won four this year, didn't he? No, I thought he only won. Th- okay, so he yeah, won four this year, yeah. so he has a total of five. Yeah, so, so he has a total five. of five wins. Yep, Nate Thrasher has three. Oh, and I'm sorry. Nate Thrasher has also been professional a lot less than Hunter Lawrence has. Okay, let's so this go. Is the let's thing. go. This profe- is- whoa, whoa, whoa! Professional hmm? Supercross. No, 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 it doesn't fucking matter. He's a <laughs> professional racer. No. How long is Hunter no. Lawrence? How long was he pro no. in the GPS? 
No, no, yep. no, yep. no, yes. you don't, yes. no, 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 yes. you don't yep. get to talk out of both sides of your mouth like that. Cause now you're, oh, I F, they're so different. They're so different. They are. It's a completely Nate different, Thrasher it's a completely different old. sport. It's a completely Nate, different Nate, sport. Nate, Nate Thrasher is 18 years old. It's a old. completely different sport. Supercross doesn't versus matter. Motocross. You're still a professional. Completely you're still a professional. Completely different. It doesn't matter. This is it like saying matter. that Michael Jordan should have been fucking should have won the MVP in the fucking Major League Baseball because he was a fucking pro basketball player for fucking no, no, twenty seven years. The same thing. Yes, not it the is. That's thing. what you're saying. No, here. it's not. Oh my god, no, this not. is a this is a ridiculous conversation. Now this is so ridiculous. Look, dude, I will tell you this right now, and I'll stand by what I said. You have been right about a few guys that I have talked about as far as like what I thought they would do. Covington big, comes to mind. Big even say AMC, <laughs> but guess what? You're wrong on this, dude. You can ask anybody in the industry. I would dare you to text Chris Cooksey and, and Coach right now and tell me that that win last night for Nate Thrasher, say it wasn't a big deal to him and see what they tell you. How about you text Kev and ask him, was that a big deal for Nate Thrasher to win that race? And every one of them will sit there and tell you, dude, it's fucking hard, and it is a big deal because guess what? If it wasn't hard, everybody would what, win races. What are we? What are we? Hold on, time out. I feel like we're arguing two different things. No, no, we're arguing about the same thing. What, I'm just bringing it a full what, circle because what, you're what, making it sound. like... What are we arguing here? Because you're making it sound like I'm arguing that winning a race isn't a big deal, and no, that's no, not what I'm arguing. Like Nate, I was arguing with you guys about how good this kid actually was, which is did he win the race? He's okay. No, he's good. But he's not that great. To win a Supercross race, you have to be great. The fact that he did what he did last night proves that if he rides like that, he can win races all the time. But he doesn't. But that's the thing, I'm though. looking that's at the, thing, the results from the year. He wasn't even on the box any other race out of the 10 this year. He got fourth once. He's got two top fives. So out of 10 races, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Out of 10 races, Mm -hmm. he's got a win. Okay. A win. Mm -hmm. That's good. He's got two top or three top fives. And then everything else is kind of, uh, especially, especially we all know how weak both coasts get at the top. And for someone who's on a star Yamaha, Okay, uh-huh. he's not quite Jarrett Fry status. Okay, we're not no, Jarrett. Don't Fry. even. We're, don't even, we're don't not even bring quite him. there. Okay, he didn't die. Don't he's not even. gonna. He's not gonna be fast in qualifying one, better in qualifying two, come out in the heat and fuck up, and then die in the whoops. Okay, he's not there. But he is not leading a team, dude. No way. Well, he'll be leading the team next year. Then that team is gonna get soft in the two fifties here. No. See, this is this is what we're arguing about is is that you're you're totally disrespecting the fact that even though he only won one race, mm-hmm. getting you said three top fives, right? Yep. Did three, you say three top three, fives? Three top okay. fives and a win. So Here's, four, I, 40 see, percent forty percent of the time I, he was in the top five. And that's the thing. Then if you tell me he's got one win and three top fives, I don't give a shit about the rest of those races. Because guess what? That proves when he is actually riding like Nate Thrasher. He is that good. All the other shit, if you look back at all the stuff that is happening. What the fuck is he riding like the rest of the time when he gets like seventh, eighth, ninth in a fucking field because that dude, only because, has five factory dudes in it? Because here's the thing. When you're riding a dirt bike at that level, when you can do that on any at any given moment, that means that you have it inside of you to do it all the time. If he can whatever his issue is, and I don't even know what it is anymore, it's gotta be mental because he has crashed a few times, but some of the times it's not even him crashing. It's more like his starts were terrible. If he can figure his own shit out, that means he is that good. Because if you're not that good, you never can do it. He's obviously proved that he can do it. It's kind of like the Michael Moseman thing that we talk about. When is Michael Moseman ever going to win a fucking race? Mm-hmm. We know he's super fast. We know he can go out and win. We know he's a top guy on his team, but he's never been able to put it together. But we all talk about, oh, my God, if Moseman can figure it out, holy shit, watch out. It's the same thing for Nate Thrasher. It's the same fucking thing that if when he can figure it out, he is that fucking good. And that's why I will argue with anybody that says what you're saying about he's not that great. Dude, you don't win three races in two years and not be great. It doesn't fucking matter if Atlanta was a weirdo fucking round. He still beat everybody that was there twice. And that's all you need to know. And then now he backed it up with he actually did it in a stadium race. And I'm sorry, he beat the dude that just won three in a row. That's my argument. 
So he is that good. He just needs to figure his own shit out. Same thing with your boy, Zach Osborne. Guess what? He came into the pros and he was absolute dog shit. He was fucking terrible. And guess what? It took him a long time to figure it out. And how many championships later? What? He's got, he got four. And I'm not saying Nate Thrasher is going to win four championships. That's not what I'm saying. I want to clarify that. But it took Zach Osborne fucking until he was 28 years old. So 12 years to get it figured out. Why mm-hmm. can't Nate Thrasher do it? Because Zach Osborne, you want to go look back at his results when he first came into it? They were a lot fucking worse than Nate Thrasher. Okay, results. all right. A lot fucking worse. Maybe if you give Thrasher 12 years, he'll get it figured out. Here's my okay. point. Here's so my what's wrong with that? Here, that's what's wrong with that, though. There, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, then that's my point. But that's, dude, that's what I'm trying to fucking po- tell to you. It doesn't fucking matter. If Zach Osborne can do it, Nate Thrasher can do it. Because like I said, go back and look at Zach Osborne's results when he first went pro. They were fucking terrible look, and they were so bad he had to go to europe i mean they yes and he surprised a lot of people when he came back okay. and did what he did so that's why, fine. why can't they thrasher do it maybe but see, that's my point though see this is where this is this is my argument well, man that's a lot what? that's a that's a very long-term bet doesn't fucking matter that, lo- that long-term that, that long-term done. bet's not going to land him on star yamaha for the next 12 years either okay and zach osborne guess what he had to do he had to go over to europe revamp his career get his shit together and he came back and then he got but, on back for the nate, rest of his you career think, you think nate thrasher is going to do that he's going to go to europe revamp his career if shit goes if he wants there. to keep racing if he wants to keep racing and he doesn't get rides over here mm-hmm. who knows who knows so that's my argument is that's why I don't care who the fuck you are. I will argue this all day long that if you want to, if you, if people want to talk about, Oh, this guy, this, that Zach Osborne's the fucking argument every fucking time, because if he can do it, so can Nate Thrasher yeah, because look. Nate Thrasher through his two years of it being a professional were better than Zach Osborne's first two years. Zach Osborne didn't even get a fucking win in Supercross until he came back from overseas is let me ask you this. Do you think Thrasher wins a title? Do I think he wins a title, like a 250 title? Yeah. It depends on how long he's going to be in the class. Because if he keeps fucking getting wins, eventually he's going to point out. He's got two more years but, left. Okay. Do I think he can win a title if I'm looking at the guys that are moving out of the division? Uh, if he rides like that and he can harness that and figure out whatever his issue is, once, once again, I will go back to what it is with a lot of people. It's a mental thing. If he rides like that with the dudes that we know are moving out of the division – Fuck yeah, I think he can. Because then you got to start looking at all the guys that are moving out. Who has wins? And when they're on, when Nate Thrasher's on like that, who's going to beat him? So you got Fortner that's moving out. You got Jet that's going to be moving out. Hunter's going to be moving out. Cooper's going to be moving out. Uh, Colton Nichols is going to be moving out. J Mart's going to be moving out. So you know who you're left with now? You're left with Joe Schmoda and Seth Hamaker. Levi Kitchen. I love Levi Kitchen, but we haven't seen enough of him in Supercross yet. Nate Thrasher, we at least have. Oh, and Mosman's going to have to move out. So, okay, so you're left Pier- with Pierce Brown, Pierce Joe Brown. Shimoda. Nope, nope, Nate Thrasher. If you tell me that Nate Thrasher shows up, no. No, because Nate Thrasher crushes, crashes less more than Pierce Brown does. Yeah. Okay, so that's so see see what I'm saying, though? You took all these dudes that are moving out. Tell me one guy that's going to that's gonna beat him. Uh, well, okay. See? So, well, hold on. So... Hamaker is the only dude I will give it to you because I love Joe, but I don't think that Joe, his outright speed, because we watched what happened earlier this year when he tries to push past his comfort zone, what happens? Mm -hmm. He can't match Nate Thrasher's outright speed. Is he more consistent than Nate? Obviously. But if you're going to talk about outright speed, Nate's got him covered. And so does Hamaker. So that's my argument. I don't think he wins a title next year. No, I don't. Well, no, he's there, not going to win the title next year because to, a lot of those dudes are still going to be there. I was going to say, you're still going to have Hunter. You're still going to have Fortner. You're still going to have Jet. You're going to have to deal with some of those guys. And I don't think he beats those guys yes. week in Okay, and week so two out. years down the road then when they're all gone. Two years from now? I mean. See, that's the thing. That's Shimoda, the thing. Shimoda can beat him. Shimoda can beat him because he's more consistent. Yes. But if Nate. Nate on outright speed, he's better than he's faster than Shimoda. Okay, but because Shimoda has one win, but at the same and time, this it was is, a bullshit but, deal. But and I know we're we're way bench racing down the road here, and we're getting way off topic. But but I'm gonna I'm gonna repeat myself the same way I did at the beginning of the year with the results from last year. Okay, except for I'm gonna go with the results from this year. Hmm? Twelve, five, hmm? eight, four, seven, twenty-one, eleven. Five, nine, one. Yep. 
in a 250 class that has five factory dudes, mm-hmm. you cannot go 8, 7, 21, 11, 9. You can't do that. No, no, and I totally agree. But see, here's the thing, though, that you need to go back. And this is why the, we're just looking at the results itself doesn't tell a lot of those stories. Other than the 21st, you said, because I don't remember that race, go back and watch a lot of Nate's races, those races that he was at. He was either coming from last – and he was moving forward, or he was literally in the top five and crashed. So here's the thing. If you take out all those dudes that he's going to be racing that beat him this year, that fifth or what was it? What was the one round that he uh, – that uh, that Christian passed him, and then he Nate went down in the left-hander? I don't remember what round it was. It was a couple rounds before we went to break for the East shoot for the East. So you take out those dudes that are not going to be there anymore. Nate Thrasher's out front. So I know that we're doing a lot of hypotheticals, but I'm just looking at it going, you take out a lot of these dudes that are in the class right now and you two years down the road, I'm looking at Seth Hamaker, Joe Schmoda, and Pierce Brown as being the only guys that can beat him. And one of those guys in Pierce Brown hits the ground more than Nate Thrasher does. So now you're looking at Seth and Joe. I love Seth. You know this, but Seth has a lot of health issues. So now you're looking at Joe. And if you tell me he can figure out his own shit, he's going to be Joe every time because he's just faster than Joe. Look, man, here's what, here's what I'm saying. The off races are too far off for me to be a believer at this point. He's not being off and getting fourth, fifth place every single week and one random weirdo. He's nope. way off. Yep. You're you're not look, I'm not arguing that. that I'm just that's arguing what, that is if, that is what I'm saying. Is like if if it was if it was his off was getting fourth or fifth every mm-hmm. single week. Okay, that's something to talk about. But when your off is a twelfth, when your off is an eighth, when you're off, I mean, let me let me just go in here. Okay, so San Diego, he gets eighth. Huh? Carson Mumford beats him. Jalik Swole beats him. Vince Freeze but beats him. Do we go? Now, but we have to go back and look at that race though, and look at what happened. We just can't look at the eighth though, because once again, there were times where he was beating all those dudes and he crashed, or he was literally coming from twentieth. Mm-hmm. So if you tell me that he got eighth in that race and he's come from twentieth and caught those dudes. I'm not worried because all you got to tell me is he's got to get his starts figured out. I don't know, man. Look, I don't disagree with a lot of the stuff that you're saying, but the thing is, is that you need to understand what I'm saying in the sense that you just don't win races by not by – you can't win a race and not be good. And the fact that he's already won three in two years I is know. impressive. Yeah, I mean, it. it is. It's great that he's won three. I just – I don't have – I don't have hype for him. There's no – there's no hype around him, and I feel like you, you and Cole, especially you, are very hyped up about it. And I just look at it like, okay, when he rides like that, it's can, hard not to be. He can no, it's not. It's very easy not to be because there's just there's not even yesterday. Okay, there wasn't a flash mm-hmm. about it or anything. Too, it's not Jet Lawrence. It's not Austin Forkner. It's not um mm-hmm. uh you know whatever. There there's not flash. It's not that fast all the time it's like oh there was a spark it's kind of like starting a fire it's like oh there's a spark and then there's nothing for like fucking six weeks and then oh there's Mm -hmm. a spark and then up there's Mm -hmm. nothing for six weeks so like when you have that like it it, in my mind it's very easy to a overlook it and b it's like okay but how many of those sparks are we going to have before it takes off or are we just going to have sparks is that all we're going to have i'll just the last thing i'll say on this i'll just keep reminding somebody he's 18 we can't talk about Jet Lawrence because Jet Lawrence is a different level, and everybody, the word you like to use is generational talent. Yeah. Take Jet Lawrence out of it. Take Jet Lawrence out of it. Nate Thrasher is still 18 years old. He's had a lot of time to figure this out. Yep. And, if you tell me that he's getting better and he's got his stuff figured out in two years, and I'm I, telling you he's winning a 250 title. And as I and as I said, he is a great secondary guy with what he's doing right now. But yeah, right now I. But, but I, it's because of the guys that he's on his team. Next year, he's going to be the leader of that team. Okay. We'll see. Well, I'm just going off of I'm just saying he's going to be the leader of that team because of the guys that are going to be on the team with him. Yeah. It's not like I'm just crowning him the leader of the team because he's got three wins. It's literally going to be because he's going to have Levi Kitchen, Nick Romano, uh, Styles Robertson, and Jordan Smith. So are you going to tell me that he's not the leader of that team just by with the guys that are on the team? Oh, no. Because no, Jordan no. Smith can't – what? It's him, and, it's him and Jordan. Yep. 
and I and, and I love Jordan. You know, I'm a Jordan Smith guy, but I don't even I wouldn't even say that it's even a conversation because Jordan hasn't fucking won a race in how many years? Yeah, Nate Thrasher at least has three. So that's why I'll say that he will be. He's almost going to be a, anointed the leader of that team because of the guys that are going out. And that's a different conversation too. My biggest thing, like I said, and, and I'm repeating myself now, is is that when he rides like that last night. That is the guy that I'm hyping up. And I will just go back to your boy, Zach Osborne. It took him 12 years to figure it out. That means other people can do it. If Zach Osborne can do it, Nate Thrasher can do it. That's all I'll say. Well, here's the thing. If they don't fix it, Nate will probably get sat out the end of next year, and he'll probably get sat out the end of the year after that. So, Because to be honest here, okay, Hunter Lawrence will – Hunter's pointing out next year. Hunter's pro- I'm Hunter- saying he's pointing out because he's. I feel like he's going to do really well outdoors and then do well again in Supercross next year. He will probably win the title next year if we're being real. Supercross. Honest. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. He could. I mean, dude. He will depending win. Depending on what goes he, on. I mean, yeah. say he will win one coast. Jet will win the other one. And then here, well, here is where it starts to run into issues, though, for for your boy, because then he'll be able to come back and defend. So then he's well, so is he going to come back and defend or is he going to be so far in points though that it's not going to matter because I know the rule that you have a you can defend after you win but I thought that say say he kills it in outdoors this year which once again if Jets injury that he has and I have no information but is a little worse than we thought and now that we know that Jmar his labrum is worse and those guys for whatever reason might miss some rounds and all of a sudden Hunter becomes the guy if Hunter wins outdoors and then he goes and wins Supercross. I don't think they're going to allow him. I think he's going to be so far over the point limit, he's not going to get to defend. I don't know. I don't know how that works. See, this is this is why the fucking MX Sports is so fucked. But you see what I'm saying, though? Yeah. Say Just hypothetically, say he wins the outdoor title this year, which I'm not saying he's going to, but this is a hypothetical conversation. Say he wins that and then he wins Supercross next year. I have a feeling he's going to be so far over the points threshold that they're not going to let him defend. Maybe I don't know how that works because I, I that's not something I've heard that if you're so far over the points threshold you can't defend. The way no, it was, I don't know the way it's always been explained to me. I'd have to ask. The way it's always been explained to me is that if you if you win you can defend. You get a year. Yeah. Yep. So even if you don't show up, yep. you have to ask Cooksey on that because I imagine yeah. Chris would probably know. But uh, I just have a feeling that if he wins two titles in two years, mm-hmm. they're not going to care. They're not going to let him because he'll be so far over the points threshold that they'll be like, well, dude. Why are you even coming back to the 250 division? Like you've won two titles in two years or whatever. Yep. I don't know. But anyways, um, yeah, and Hunter, I mean, dude, riding really good. And part of me believed that when he got that start, that he was going to win that fucking race. I yeah. mean, he was, he started slow at the beginning of the day and then just slowly figured it out. Yeah. It was, it was uh-huh. a surprise to me that Thrasher got by him, but whatever shit happens. So, yep. uh, but good yep. year for him. Second place in points. I mean, he did everything he could and it's another one like Ando hitting the ground in Detroit. If he oh, doesn't yeah. hit the ground in a three, that's a whole different race there at the end of the year. Oh, yeah. So, oh yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. Um, uh, Pierce Brown third. That was a good ride for him. Uh, RJ well, didn't go down in the Brown. Yeah. RJ went down a couple times yesterday, still pulled off a fourth. There's another guy that's in there with, uh, you know, they could fuck yeah. up Thrasher's I'm, future career. I'm not here. worried about, I'm not worried about RJ. Yeah, I'm I mean, not really either. we all know, that's we know who RJ, <laughs> yeah, we know who RJ is really, really fast yeah. at times, but I mean, he crashes more than anybody riding a 250 in the fucking world. Did you hear, I don't remember if it was a broadcast or in the, in the qualified show where they were talking about, he, he went after, he went to star to try to get a ride there. Yeah. And they said, uh, no. Yeah. Which is, yeah, no, I, funny. I had heard that. Yeah. Well, why would you, why would you sign him? Like he, dude, he's super fucking fast. We all know that. Yeah. We know that he can win races outdoors. But why would you sign him? Because first off, he's going to ask for a lot of money, mm-hmm. and you don't even fucking know how many races he's actually going to finish. Yeah. Yep. So um, Schmoda fifth. That's a good finish for him. Forkner sixth, yep. which was a bit of a surprise. He was riding pretty good. I thought he was he stood a chance to win that race yesterday with the way I'm he rode assume, qualifying and yeah. stuff. I think it was just a bad start. Assume, well, I'm also going to assume that not only the bad start, but he probably late in that race realized, you know what? I just need to make it through this race and make it healthy for outdoors because he's yep. already been outdoor testing for the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, Mosby. <sighs> Crashed it all day long. Most what? Crashed all day long. Yeah. Yep. Just like, fucking could not keep it together I yesterday. He, I don't think he was on track and any point did he at least not crash once any yeah. point he was on the track hundred percent hundred percent. It was a bad day. So, uh, well, Craig eighth finally gets it done. Wins the title. Whoopee. 
Here we are. You know, he, held it, he held it together, but he tried to give it away. You know, man, I don't know. I'm so conflicted with it because I am not the biggest Christian supporter. I do like him, and that's only because I was around him a very, very long time ago. Um, I know all the shit that he's been through. I mean, we all know the stuff that he's been through and stuff, but like some of the stuff you don't really know about, like shit with his dad, um, you know, him almost literally being paralyzed. Yeah. And I, and I will say, and, and I don't, even I think the biggest Christian Craig uh, detractors, critical people, I don't think you can look at that last night when he goes over the finish and he's getting emotional and then even like looking at a page and him holding, you know, going down there with Jagger and all that. I don't think you can really sit there and go, hey, man, you can't not be happy for that dude. Like, I understand he's 30. It took him a very, very long time. But also we got to look at that dude's been through a lot of shit. And there's a lot of the criticism he brought on himself. Yes. Yeah. We all know this. But the dude's been through a lot. He's been through hell and back as far as shit he went through with his family and almost being paralyzed. I'm not talking about, oh, he left the sport and came back. I'm not talking about that. So I will say that I was happy for him. Would I like to see Hunter get it? Of course. But you know what? Christian was really fast this year. Uh, Almost threw it away a couple times, but he didn't, and he won. And that's honestly all that matters. So was I happy for him? Yeah, of course. I'm happy for anybody that wins the title. I'm happy for any of them. I don't care who you are. Yep. Well, like I said, he did it. Good job. Congratulations. And uh, now he's got a couple of years left riding, and then, you know, he's out. Yeah, probably like two or three. Two, I mean, two, he's obviously already really good on that 450. Yeah, two or three year 450 career, but hey, we'll see. So, uh, Chris Blows yep. had a good night, man. He was he was fast all night, ninth place. Last one ever. Last, Last one, ever, one ever. So that was good. Uh, oh, man, I've died over here. Uh, Jalik Swole, 10th. Uh, mm-hmm, yep, that's Whatever. a Jalik Swole thing. Uh, Jordan Smith, 11th. Jordan Smith does Jordan Smith things. Uh, yep. Jace Owen, 12th. He was not happy. Did you watch qualifying when he crashed and uh, broke his nose? Yeah, I did catch that before I had uh, shit to do. Yes, I did crash. <laughs> did, you uh... did you watch him throw his helmet? Jesus Christ. Yeah, I did. Yeah, that's kind of Jace was kind of like that when he was younger. So okay, that's right. not really that's not really surprising that he had an outburst like that. All right. Well, uh, Mitchell Oldenburg, man, he had, he just had a shit start. I was super disappointed. Yeah, I, I was, was super too. disappointed in him. I honestly thought after the way qualifying went and the way he went in that heat race, I was like, dude, Mitchell can get in the top. Like Oldenburg can get in the top five, and then he just yep, fucking just terrible. Yep. Uh, your boy Derek Drake, fourteenth. Uh, Carson Brown, fifteenth. Colin Park, rookie of the year, sixteenth. Good job to him. Yep. Uh, Vince Freeze. I'm gonna be real honest with you. Vince Freeze did not have a good fucking ride last night. Seventeenth, <laughs> dude. He he kind of man. He kind of fell apart in the last couple 250 rounds. Which oh, he crashed. Because, That's what it was. He crashed coming out of the whoops. Do you remember? They showed yeah, but I mean, dude, even in the heat, even in the heat race though, he yeah. wasn't that good. Yep. Uh, Dominique Thury, eighteenth. Uh, Mitchell Harrison update at nineteenth. No, man, I haven't talked to him. Cole okay. said something about I saw somewhere that he's going to Canada, which wouldn't shock me because I know that Mitchell really wanted to do outdoors anywhere. Okay. So, uh, I mean, if that's true, I'll have to try to get a hold of him here in the next couple of weeks, see if I can talk to him. But if that's true, I mean, that's, that's a good deal for him. I mean, he's going to instantly be a title contender outdoors because we know he's 10 times better outdoors than in the Supercross. So sure, that'll be a pretty cool deal. Uh, Jarrett Fry still wearing in this picture on Racer X the uh, star racing hat, 20th. Marshall. I didn't even realize that Jarrett was out there, which is weird because I like Jarrett Fry, but I didn't even realize that he was in that main. Yeah, well, that's not a surprise. Michigan native Marshall Welton, 21st. And mm-hmm. Enzo Lopes, fuck my fantasy again, 22nd. Well, come to find out, he's got some issues going on that we didn't really know about, so kind of makes sense. What's he got happening? I don't know. I didn't see that. Oh, you didn't Oh, you didn't hear what they were talking about the qualifying? So apparently he's been dealing with an issue. Oh, with yeah, only... the arm pump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yep. So he's getting that fixed, so which means he will not be riding outdoors, uh-huh. which is a bummer. Yeah, that is a bummer. It's too bad. Um, yeah, well, that's the thing is, is it's a bummer because obviously they're going outdoors with Phil whenever he gets healthy in the 450s, March Banks, who also didn't make it because he crashed in uh, free practice, yeah. and Amart. But then 250s, I'm going to have to assume if Enzo's out, and that's just going to leave them with Owen and Theory, and Thurry is not really an outdoor guy, so that leaves him. You know what? I will not be shocked if we get a press release here in the next couple of weeks that club is just going outdoors with their 450 team and no 250 team. Maybe. We'll see, man. We'll see. So, um, and then I guess the only other thing to talk about, uh, Jet went down in practice 
Uh, they're saying sprained ankle right now. We'll see. Um, yeah, when I'm going to assume he's probably going to get an, R- an MRI here pretty soon. Well, probably tomorrow. Yeah, that was such a weird one, dude. Like, we watched it several times. And we were texting, and we were like, dude, what the fuck even happened? Because, like, when we went to seat bounce, it was like foot slipped off, hand came off, foot yeah. went off again. I tried to watch it, but I hate watching that stuff, like, when things bend in weird ways because it always makes me yeah. cringe. But from, yep. from what I did see, like, I didn't notice, like, the knee or anything popping a weird direction. It was it was just the weird, the foot coming off, and then the foot kind of got stuck under the bike. So it may just yep. be a sprained ankle. Like, like it may, we may be trying to read too much into this because everyone's so secretive in the industry. It may yep. just be a sprained ankle, and if he stays off it for the next week or so, like, he'll be all right. Yeah, I mean, let's all hope that that's all it is. I mean, who knows? You know, it also could be one of those things that it was a sprained ankle and Jay, Jet's just like, hey, I already won the title, like, whatever, it's the last round. Yeah. But if it is something more than that, once again, we're not going to speculate on that shit because that's just – when it comes to injuries, that's something that I don't, I don't really like to do. So let's just hope it's that because if it's more than that, um, it's – outdoors is going to be a little rough start to the season. And once we know that Jay Mart's got his issues with his labrum – um, I don't know with, if all the guys that we think are going to stay healthy, if Hunter stays healthy, Fortner stays healthy, obviously we have other guys, you know, I don't know if anybody jet and J Mart included can come in behind the eight ball into outdoors and still win the title. Hmm. That's all that. Yeah. And what I mean by that is, is that if jet, if it is worse and he doesn't get any outdoor testing time here within this May month, before we go to the end of the month, First couple rounds are going to be a struggle bus because I think that you got a lot of guys that with the way their Supercross season went, they're going to have something to prove. Yeah. And I just don't know with how deep this class is that if you get a fifth, a seventh, a fourth in the first couple rounds, I just, I don't, I don't know. I I don't know if Jed or J Mark can win if they start off the season struggling. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, J Mark, I heard, I don't think J Mark's riding period. I don't think he's going. I don't think he is either because that lab, that labrum is bad. Yeah, that labrum is very so very I bad. Think, so I guess, th- yeah, yeah. So I think he's out for sure. And then yeah, we'll see what happens with Jet here. But um, all right, well that is the race recap there. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate oh, yeah. it. Six seasons oh, yeah. here down. Many more to go. Um, we're gonna say goodbye to you. I'm gonna try to call Kev here. See if he picks up. I asked him if he wanted to come on about eight. He never really responded. So we'll see. I'm just going to call him and see if he picks up. So, Ask Yeah, just him. let everybody know. Outdoors, our outdoor preview will be that, what is that, 21st or 22nd? Are we going to 21st or 22nd? It's going to it's gonna, week- it's gonna air the Tuesday before the race, just like normal. Yep. It'll be just yep. like so, a normal show. We're going to be kind of yep. off for the next couple weeks here. The next show you'll get from us outside of the fantasy wrap-up show is going to be the outdoor preview show, and then we'll do all the consecutive segments there, but it'll all be done in that week leading up to the leading up to Fox Raceway 1 there. Yep. So, yeah, yep. so everybody enjoy the next few weeks here. It's getting nice out. I know it's getting really nice out here in Michigan, so we're going to start mm-hmm. riding and stuff too. So enjoy your, uh, enjoy your time off. Enjoy the time between the races here where we don't have our Saturdays taken up by hours and hours of racing. And, uh, yeah, we'll see everybody. Thanks to everybody who listened here again. We're going to try to get Kev on, but, uh, we'll see. So thanks everybody. Thanks, Justin, Justin. I will, uh, I will see you on Friday or something. So. All right, man. Sounds good. All right. Later, buddy. Yeah. Bye. All right. And we, we will try to call privateer hero. Kevin Moran's here and see if he uh see if he picks up. Let's give this a shot here. He might not answer. I did talk to him about possibly doing this. He asked what time and they never responded. So we're just gonna call him and find out here. Let's see if he picks up here. Hello, this is Kevin Moran. Sorry, I didn't get to the phone. Send us you just leave me a message. All right. Well, no Moran's interview this week here. He will be on the show here in the future, so we'll get to talk to him. I want to just uh, thank everybody for uh, for tuning in this year. Thank you for a great Supercross season. Um, the views on YouTube have been up. The podcast plays and downloads and everything have been up. 
Um, so thanks everyone who's watched. Thanks everyone who's commented. Thanks everyone who shares and likes and all of that good stuff. Um, I just really, really thank you for, uh, for keeping up on our little, little side hobby here that we have of, uh, watching the races, going to the races, talking about the races as, as this has been stated six years ago, and it's been stated multiple times in between. And I will continue to state it here as we go forward. This podcast was started by guys who love moto for people who love moto by people who love moto, um, not industry insiders, not previously people who were previously in the industry, just some guys in Michigan who love the sport and just want to talk about it because we are going to fucking talk about it anyway. So why not just record talking about it and let everybody else, you know, listen to our bench racing because I know there's thousands and thousands and thousands of the same type of people out there. So thanks to everyone for listening. Thanks to all of our sponsors here for this year. Um, Links in the description below for them. Links for everything else in the description below. Like I said, we'll be back with a fantasy show this week here early on. Uh, not the normal day. It'll be a little bit earlier because we're just wrapping up. Um, and then we will uh, we will get into the outdoors uh, in a couple weeks here. Like I said, the week leading up, we'll have all the shows debuting and all the different segments. Talk about all the different teams for 250 and 450. And we'll roll it from there. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Show 201. And uh, we'll see you guys in a couple weeks. I've got to get back in the restaurant, too, so it works out for both of us. Oh, okay, cool. All right, and, okay, so I know I said he wasn't coming on, but he called me right after I turned the thing off. It is Privateer Hero, Mr. Kevin Morans. Hey, buddy. How's it going? How's it going? Dude, this was an exciting weekend for you. So, let's start here. I know you're trying to get back into the restaurant. I'm trying to go to bed here. Let's start LCQ Challenge on fucking Friday. Tell us about that, because you want a bunch of money. Uh, I haven't been paid yet, so that's hopefully going to be coming this week. Uh, so I'm not getting too excited slash not saying a whole lot about it until that comes through. But <laughs> yes, uh, it was very solid, whole shotted first uh, to the finish line. So that was nice little bonuses and then just relax. Just started to hit my marks because I knew it was at stake. And uh, obviously I kind of saw Chiz in the background after I had a little bit of a lead. And I saw him creeping up towards me. He made a move. I had a little bit of an opportunity to try to dive into him after he got around me after the Supercross triple. But, you know, Chiz is going to Chiz. I knew his quality of riding was slightly above mine. Um, so I wasn't going to try to mess with that because then if I hit him, then it'd slow both of us down. And then he maybe try to hit me if I didn't take him out. It was, just, it was a smarter move just to let him go and try to tag along. Brees ended up getting around me, and then he made a mistake at the very last corner, and I slipped by for a second. So it was sweet. Yeah. Um, wait, so there was a bonus for whole shot and first to the finish line? Yeah. Sweet. What was the – so it because Hannah Ray did like the 1000 bucks for the whole shot, right? Yeah. And then what was the what was the first to finish line bonus? Christian Craig put up another G-note. Nice, nice, nice. Yeet. It's a good thing he won that title then so he could afford to pay that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's about to go all towards the freaking Supercross track in about three days. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So – and then now you didn't get, um, I did see a thing cause you like jumped when the red cross lights were on or something. They weren't, they're not docking you for that. Are they? No, there's nothing between that. It's cause the biggest thing was, um, like I have a photo of the, there was a track crew member one. It was a yellow flag that was out. They didn't have a medical flag. Yeah. Um, and two, they may have had the right, the, the, the um, well, they just didn't have the right flags. It's the biggest thing, mm. but the guy was standing on top of the triple face right in front of the lights, waving me towards him, not waving me down to roll it. So he was covering up the lights, if there were even lights, by the time I got over there. Mm. And uh, so I did oh. All right, let's try this one more time here. Okay, cool. Anyway, and we're back, I guess. Um, did you like that track yesterday? Because I didn't like that track at all. Now, I thought it wasn't that great, to be really honest. It's just kind of awkward. Um, I did like the section before... The Supercross Triple and the section after the Supercross Triple. The rest of the track, I was not a fan of. Okay. Um, just because it was tight, kind of goofy, not much of a flow. Whoops were obviously tough, which I actually kind of like that. Uh, but everything else was just kind of goofy with it. But, um, you know, Dirtworks did what they could with what they had. And for what they had, it was pretty good. Sweet. Um, okay, so tell walk us through your race day yesterday. So race day, qualifying was a little bit rough, uh, crashed pretty good in the second qualifier, trying to jump through the whoops, went over the bars, jammed my thumb pretty good. It's pretty swollen right now. 
Um, and so it wasn't the best start of the day. Qualified 30th, which is not great. Um, but obviously to the night show. So heat race takes off. I don't get a good jump. Well, I get a good jump, but I get completely screwed just with my gate pick. And uh, came around uh, like third lap and fought my way up to 10th. And ninth was just a touch too far in front of me. I couldn't track him down. Uh, so long story short, ended up just one spot out of straight transfer and to another LCQ. So didn't have the, uh, the best of day going into the LCQ, but uh, got a still not a great start in the LCQ. I was running like eighth, fought my way up to fourth really quick. I uh, was trying to get around John Short, um, had him kind of sized up in the whoops and was going inside to try to sneak past him. And that was kind of the exact moment when he wrecked. And as soon as he wrecked, I was like, okay, now I got really inside. But then when he hit the ground, he tried to like roll out of it, which was right into my line. So then I hit him, went down. Tristan Lane hit me. He went down. Then it was a full on scramble fest to try to get my bike up, which I'm pretty sure was still in third gear. And I just clutched the ever living piss out of it to try to get over the finish line from the bottom of the face. Case the finish line and went on to uh, get a transfer and then went to the main event and came away with um, my best ever career 450 main event finish with 15. Oh, so okay. I say pretty dang good weekend. Okay, sweet. Yeah, we were we were talking about that because we couldn't remember if that was the best or if you'd had like a 15th before. But hey, whatever, man. That's that's awesome. So yeah, I all will, the way to end the season. I will not lie. I uh, I had you on my fantasy team. I took you off because I was like, oh, man, I just don't think his ceiling is as high here. You know, I figured you 16, 17, 18th. So I had Clayson and uh, God, who the fuck else did I pick there? Uh, Clayson and oh, uh, Benny. And then, of course, they both they both <laughs> Bummer crashed. deal, buddy. Dude. Bummer deal. So fucking mad. Like at one point, <laughs> like the first. So the first lap of the 450s, I have like. 290 some points and i'm in like 240 something place out of the league or out of the whole the whole thing of like 10,000 or 15,000 people and i'm like yeah. sick and then like five minutes in it mellows out and i'm still like in the top 1,000 i'm like okay sweet great way to finish the year and then next thing i just see Cade and benny just boop, 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 and i'm like fuck off and then you get 15th <laughs> and i'm like fuck my life like just yeah fuck don't doubt my... your boy dude i wasn't doubting you it wasn't like i thought you weren't gonna make the main i just go okay if he finishes say in that 16 17 18th spot my points are not quite as good as like Cade is running up towards the top 10 you know benny right. can You're get right. in the top 10 especially with the field the way it is they're like a five right. and a seven handicap especially Cade because he didn't make the main last week so his handicap was way up there so like wasn't wasn't doubting your skill of getting in wasn't doubting that you know you could put a 15th or something together i'm just saying law averages for what i needed which was to make sure i got enough points to beat cole and justin i had to go a different direction all right understandable understandable so, but other than that no it was a solid weekend so i'm stoked with it yeah Good that's to build cool off of time to go build a super cross track and uh finally got my plans for outdoors solidified sweet what uh, do we got weekend, so that's good what do we so got? We're looking at the middle eight rounds or middle nine rounds. If I can make Washougal happen, if not Washougal, then the rest of them. So eight rounds. Okay. The middle eight rounds minus Washougal. Uh, so that means no Californias to begin and no California round to end it. Okay. Cool. Cool. So you'll start at so, Thunder Valley then. Indeed. Awesome. At least that's the current plan. Got more information coming soon. Are you driving or are you, is your bike getting toted? Um, that's more information coming soon on it getting toted. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Uh, another question. Yeah. When do I get my pit bike? Uh, I need to get on that as soon as possible, but I got to get home first. <laughs> so I'm leaving tomorrow or I'm leaving in the morning at like 4 a.m. to try to get all the way home. It's no, like right. 15 hours. Gross. Hey, I'm just saying when I win that, I'll, um, I'll drive out so I can ride the super cross track too. Uh, I bet and, I like and it. Pick it up. So yeah, we'll just make I that. Like we'll just make that the plan. So, all right, man. Well, I appreciate you calling in and giving us some time here. I know you got to get to dinner there, and like I said, I got to go to bed because I'm exhausted. So, uh, appreciate it, man. Great season. Pumped we came out of it healthy, and we're still rolling. And uh, yeah, we will. Uh, we will chat here in the upcoming weeks as we get closer to outdoors here. All right.
Yep, absolutely. I appreciate it. I uh, appreciate the support from the Moto Aftermath show. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys all soon. All right. Thanks, buddy. Have a good one. All right, thanks. Yep. Bye. All right, Kevin Moran's everybody. Sorry for the uh, recorder shutting off in the middle there. I don't know what the fuck happened with that one. Um, but that is going to now officially be the end of show 201. Um, again, thanks for listening. I gave the big thanks already. So we'll see everybody for Outdoors in a couple weeks. Later. Outdoors!